Hi everyone, I just want to do a quick video uh, on my iPhone. Um, I'm in my back room where I've got a table with a few locals laid on it. I'm just about to currently embark on a two year module building engage set. Um, I model, as you can probably see from some of the stuff I've got here, I model engage Fleischmann stuff, uh, which is quite, quite nice. It's European. And um, I'm, like I say, I'm, I'm just about to start building a, a modular layout. But I've, the, the reason I'm making this video isn't isn't to identify all that really. It's just to identify a new tool that I've just got my hand on. Excuse the um, the camera moving about a bit because I am using an iPhone and not not a camera on an iPod on, on, a, on a pod. So this item that you can see in front here, I purchased it the other day. It cost me £30 and it's been imported from Turkey. It's a power track railer. Like most people, uh, I'm running Engage, like I say. This, I, I normally use, um, I normally use one of these plastic Fleischmann. You can see it's got a, an end that's beveled so that the wagons can roll straight onto the track. And it's pretty straightforward really, you lay it on the track, so, and then you, you, you get a wagon, you place the wagon on it, and you release it, and then obviously it will just slide onto the track like that. that it's a simple concept, it, it's been around for years. Um, just, just to prove that you learn something new in modern every day, here's, here's two, here's the one that I got in my first set, which is around 1980 something. I was about to throw these away the other day, but I flipped it upside down. I don't know if you can see it there. There's a picture there of two tracks. And then you can see that the spacer, or the railer, is, on, is, is spacing the tracks out on each end of the track. So it acts as a, a actual spacer, which is 33.6 millimeters, if you can see that on the video there. So how that works is quickly, I'll just show you quickly. You can see the grooves on the side there. You just place them on the track. Once it clicks on the track, it keeps the track at a set distance. It's as simple as that, really. That's that's how it works. So I didn't even realise that it did that. So now I'll be able to use that to keep my track separate. But the, the idea of this video was just to identify um, this electric track railer, which in this world of DCC now, it just seemed the right thing to do because I've got lots of sound locos. You can probably hear going around. In fact, I've got another one just coming past now. Let me just pop the sound on so you can hear it. Here it comes. You can hear the fancy brakes on it and all that as it slows down. But because we're in, because we're in this world of DCC sound, I kind of like I wanted to get a, tr a, a, a track railer that, that would work uh, so that I could have the sound immediately go on, so I could tell if there was anything wrong with the engine before I actually put it on the track properly. Um, hence why I bought this. And I'm sure that most people will be, will be aware that when you're actually trying to put tra uh, trains on onto a track, especially um, especially a steam engine like this, because the wheels are all separate on, on the bogies at the bottom, you're forever faffing around trying to get it to line up on the track, and it takes two or three, two or three minutes. Even with one of these plastic railers, it could take a bit of time just to line it up and then because of because of that um, because you've got that angle there it, it, it kind of like makes it awkward when it meets the track so you've got like a bit of a, a sort of like it bevels upwards so you, it doesn't actually go on the track and you have to mess about with it so hence why I bought this anyway so I saw a small if you look at the end of the box here you can see it says YouTube video that's uh, the the uh, the arc uh, I can't remember what it's called, that symbol, but you, you can scan that and it'll just take you straight to the video. But there is a YouTube video with this. On, if, you, if you just type in YouTube and just sort of Google and put in process video and it'll just show you. There's a young five-year-old kid, shows a picture of a kid putting um, putting a local on the track. It's that simple to use, it's crazy. So I thought I'd, um, I'd show how it actually works. And, uh, and when, I, when I took it out of the box, I was kind of like, I was a little bit disappointed really at first because I, I thought the quality of it was, was was lacking a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see, but at the very end there, there's a few little score marks on the end, and it just it just needed a little bit of tidying up. So I need to 
I need to just clean clean the bits off the end because they're quite sharp. And you can see from the plastic on the end there, and all there's a few a few blemishes on the plastic. And again, um, at the very end of here, you can see some of the glue where the plastic's glued onto the side of the um, of the aluminium. And they're, they're just little things. You can see there's a blemish there, right where you know where you can see the end of the box there. You can just see that little bit of uh, score coming off the end where the black plastic is, where the low coat is touching it now. So there's little bits and pieces on it that just needed to be a bit more effort. Had they had done that, I'd have probably give it a ten out of ten. Because if you look, it's been it's been machined so that it's got a groove, which is a great idea because it, it just sits on the track perfectly with that. It's made with two separate pieces of aluminium, and obviously there's a there's a bit of plastic that segregates it down the middle, and that's what stops it shorting on your track really. And I guess they put that plastic on the end there to make it secure so it doesn't bend. But I think they've probably missed a trick here. I think if they could have done the same on that end as they've done on that end, you could have put the logo on at each side then. But I'll lay it on the track just so you can see how it works. It's pretty straightforward and simple really. It drops straight onto the track. As you can see, it's on the track there. I put my finger on it and you can actually move it forward and backwards without pushing on it really hard. Now, I've, I've got a couple of wagons on here that I'll just show you quickly. Um, this is, um, you can see it's a small, um, a small hopper wagon. That, there's, there's nothing difficult about putting one of these on the track, even without, you can put one without even this, but it's still a bit fiddly, but you do it like that, it just goes on simple. If you try to put it on by hand, obviously I can do it again on hand, look at that, it took me two turns to get it on. But it does, it does go on, it's not difficult. But it's when you start getting other things where, you probably notice that the bogey on this is a 360, it's gone straight round in a circle. If I try to put that on one-handed, it's really difficult. I won't, I, I'll get it on, but it won't be as quickly. Like, see, there you go, it's on. So that took me about 10 seconds, but if I just put it on top of here, just lay it on top of that, and then I just push it straight on, it took me two seconds to do that. So the time factor's cut down tremendously. And that is just with, uh, that's just with a couple of wagons. With the locos, it's even better because I've, I've got this loco here. I'm, I'm actually running it on my Z21, as you can see. I'm gonna use this loco here, which is also sound, and it's got lights on it. I'm gonna pick it up, put it on the track, and I'm going to put it on this now. Here we go. As soon as I put it on, I put it on the wrong way around, so I need to turn it around. As soon as I put it on, I can hold it, and you can hear it going. You see the lights at the back of my hand there. If I let go, it'll go straight on, and you don't even hear the, hear, hear the sound go off. It stays on all the time. It doesn't matter how many times you do it. Put it on the track as soon as, it, as soon as it goes on the track. Let's just turn it forward so you can see the lights don't flicker or nothing, it just goes straight on the track. And that is a bit of kit that I, I like. So, again, from the back, I'll put it on so you can see the red lights at the back of the wagon and the loco. It goes straight on the track and it doesn't even flash. You don't get any change in the sound or nothing, it just immediately goes on the track. It's as simple as that. And I I bought this about four or five days ago. It cost me thirty pounds, including postage and package. And when you're using um, a steam locomotive like that, it's very fiddly. But I, I've tested it with all my wagons that I've got. I've got a couple of, um, I've got a couple of car transporters that are quite fiddly to put on because the centre of them moves for going around corners. And it's the best bit of kit I've actually bought in a long time. If I'm honest, uh, I've got an ice tray that's currently coming round. I'll, I'll just show it you when it comes round. This is the most. This is why I actually bought this. This ice train that's coming down the track any second now. I don't want to take it off the track because it's quite difficult. But these coaches here, they're all connected by a little clip that pushes in. So if I try to disconnect them and take them off, I literally have to pull them apart, and it's quite a tough process. So when I put them together and put them on the track. If I, can, if I can sort of demonstrate how it works. So basically I have to clip them together, but I have to lay them on the side like that, then clip them together. So I've clicked seven or eight of them in a line together like that. And then I have to lift them all up like that to get them on the track. And you can imagine how difficult it is to try and do that and to keep them connected because the weight of them will keep them laid over. So this particular item here, it just allows me to put them on from this side. Even though they've been laid down, I can lift them up and then I can just pull them over the top of this and it just literally goes straight on without any messing about. So that's why I wanted to share this video with you. 
they come in two, two sizes, well three sizes if you calculate uh, the, the European standard as well. So you've got N-Gage, double O for UK and HO for, for European modellers. Um, the, I, I don't know what the price is for the, uh, for the double O or HO ones but this like I say was £30 but be aware that it is actually coming from Turkey as it, as it depicts on the box here it says made in Turkey. So when you purchase it, even though the website looks like it's in German or English, uh, it will actually be delivered from abroad and you will have to pay import charges uh, because you're not paying VAT across the pond. So I got this through the post the other day and I didn't have to pay VAT on it, but I've been on the website since and I've also bought a track cutting tool and um, had that sent over and I've just, I've just been clobbered now another four quid um, for import charges. Anyway. That's the video, just wanted to make a quick video. Uh, I will be putting more videos on in the next couple of months coming up. As I say, I'm building some modules because I'm planning Android to show to show all the locos. I've got quite a substantial amount of kit. Um, I've got a YouTube page which is called Engaging. I set it up last week. I'll start posting on there as soon as I start making more modules. Hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, I'm gonna pop this on Facebook. It's on, a, it's on one of the, uh, someone else's site. So obviously uh, I don't want to do too much advertising. Uh, this isn't a sponsored video by the way. This is purely done by myself. I've not been paid any money from Process for doing this. I just wanted to share it with everyone because I felt it was a really good tool. Uh, look forward to your feedback on, on Facebook. And again, once I've got this uploaded, if it's good enough, I'll put it on my YouTube channel and then you can leave, leave any comments on there. Thanks very much for putting up with and listening to my uh, comments. Thank you, bye-bye.